Okay. We need to talk. All the time I get loads of DMs, emails, questions asking me what camera am I using, what lenses, what lighting. So I thought today I'd sit down, we'll go through everything that's in my camera bag and everything that's in my sort of day-to-day -day equipment. I'm gonna put it all out on the floor and I'm just gonna talk to you about everything. So let's get started. Okay, let's get started. So starting off with the camera bag itself, this is the Lower Pro BP, Tahoe BP150. Honestly, I don't know too much about this camera bag. I got it as a gift a few years ago and it's the only camera bag that I've ever had but it works for me and it works for what I do. So let's open it up. Okay. Okay, so here is what is in my camera bag. I've got my camera with a lens attached and then also another lens. You might be wondering, why is there a gap? In this gap here, I usually have another lens, but I'm using it to film this video right now, but I'll talk about that more in a second. So first of all, this camera bag has this main compartment and then it has this zip bit at the top here, which is where I store my uh, battery charger and cables and a spare camera strap as well. So I just keep all that stuff in there, spare batteries, power cables, all of that sort of thing. And then you have the main compartment, which is obviously where you have your camera and your lenses and whatever else you wanna have. And then actually in the top here, in this top compartment here, there is a little slot where you can put some SD cards in here. So I keep SD cards in that bit. And then if we just close it up so I can show you the front, this is what the front of it looks like. It has two zip pockets at the front. So this first one is where I sort of store like spare AA and AAA batteries. And also, one thing that's really important that I always carry in my bag is some sort of pain relief, like paracetamol, ibuprofen, cold and flu tablets, because when you're on set and you have a headache, it's no fun, and if your model has a headache or feels sick or anything, I always like to just have this, just in case. So that's mainly what's in the front bit there. And then in this other zip pocket, we have a tether cable. I always shoot a lot in studio, so I carry a tether cable so that I can connect my camera to my laptop and then tether it into Capture One so all the photos come straight through and I can see them and the rest of the team and my client can see what I'm shooting on the camera. So tether cable is really important. And then I also have a small reflector. This I just use if I'm on location and I just need to pop out and get an extra sort of pop of light. I use a reflector and this is one of the sort of like four or five in one reflectors. So it has a silver side, it has a black side and then inside here it also um, has gold and a diffuser as well. So it has a diffusion panel as well. So I always just keep that in there and I do have a bigger one which I do use but this is a kind of handy one to sort of keep in the kind of bag and it just folds up like that. So I'm just gonna put this off to the side. So that's everything that is in this sort of front compartment here. One thing I did miss is this prism, which I don't really use that often, but I bought it a few years ago. You can see it's actually broken because I dropped it on set. It was in my pocket and it fell out. This is a prism. Uh, you might have seen these online. It's kind of like, it was like an Instagram trend thing. I don't know if people still use it. I occasionally use it. You can sort of put it in front of your lens and then refract the light and it kind of distorts the image a little bit, which is a kind of cool effect. It's kind of cool for if you're shooting like a concert or an event or something, you can sort of manipulate the light a little bit. Or if you're shooting like a portrait and you just want to block something out in the, in the corner of the frame, you can sort of use this to like block it out and give it a kind of cool, slightly distorted, slightly like whimsical kind of vibe. So I have a prism as well. So now to the exciting stuff, what is actually inside the bag. So as you can see, I have my camera. This is the Canon 5D Mark IV. I've been using this camera for about a year now. I upgraded previously from a 6D 
which I also carry with me sometimes on set, but right now it's filming this video. And the reason I like this camera and the reason why I upgraded from the 6D is just because I wanted better autofocus. This is the third camera that I've owned. I started off with a Canon 600D, then I got a 6D, which is full frame, and then I got the 5D Mark IV, which is also full frame. It also has better autofocus and some more settings that just make it a bit more advanced than the 6D. So yeah, this is my, this is my camera, this is what I use. So the lens on this camera is the Canon 24-70 f2.8. This is my favourite lens by far. It's so good for fashion because it allows you to quickly go from a wide angle to a much closer shot and like it goes up to 70. So I mean typically a portrait lens is going to be about 85 but you can get away with a decent portrait at 70mm as well. So this is just my go-to. It's super sharp, um, focuses really fast, quality is really good. It's quite heavy, but I don't mind. Um, some people complain about weight. I'm sort of used to heavy equipment. I mean, the camera is not that light itself because it's a full DSLR. It's not like a mirrorless camera or anything. So it's kind of weighty, but I don't mind it. 24 70 my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite lens. So it's always stays on my camera. The other lens I have in here is the 70 to 200. This is also 2.8 but I more commonly use this if I'm doing something like a close-up portrait or beauty, or if I'm shooting someone outside and I'm quite far away from them, I will go for this lens. This lens is really good quality, focuses really fast as well. I find that all the Canon L lenses that I've used are actually really good quality and really work quite well, so I kind of stick to them. Now, the lens that I have missing here, which I mentioned is filming this video right now, is the Sigma 50mm 1.4. Now, that is my least favorite lens. I bought it a while ago, a long time ago, when I still had a Canon 600D. So one tip that I have is invest in lenses before you invest in bodies, unless there's something that your body really can't do. So first invested in the 50mm when I had my 600D, and then I upgraded to the full frame 6D, and then I bought the 24-70. So I always recommend investing in lenses before bodies because I find that a lens can really improve the quality of the image especially if you're used to using like a kit lens or the cheaper lenses a good quality lens will really up your your game when it comes to the quality that you can put out but the reason why I don't like the 50mm so much is just because it's not I find it to be not quite as reliable as I need the lens to be the build quality is really good the picture quality is decent but I also find that the focus, it sort of misses the focus a lot of the time. And that is a kind of common problem with some of the Sigma lenses. You can get something that you can plug into your computer and adjust the focal lengths of the lens, but I don't think that I should need to do that, especially if I'm paying about 500 to 600 pounds for a lens. I don't think I should need to make manual adjustments to it. So it's not my favorite lens, but I do use it occasionally. Um, it's good for sort of Instagram content or, if you really want that sort of shadow depth of field look, it's great for that. And it's also decent for video as well. I mean, the video quality looks pretty good here right now. So it's, it's not too bad, but it's not my favorite lens on set because it's not quite reliable enough. So one other tip that I have when it comes to cameras is always try to carry a backup camera, especially if you're working with a client on a client shoot that you've, especially if you're being paid for a shoot, always try to carry a backup camera. You never know when your camera is gonna fail or you know corrupt or something like that so i always carry the 6d as well as the 5d when i'm working on set if i need to use it great if i don't then no problem obviously it makes my bag a bit heavier but i'd rather be safe than sorry um and if you don't use it for your main shoot you can always get someone to shoot behind the scenes or something like that so i always like to carry two cameras with me just in case the other thing i have in here is my pro photo air remote this is really handy for my lighting. It means that I can adjust the power and turn on and off my flash lights without needing to sort of go over and do it. So it's really handy when you're either on set or on location and the lights are in different places. I can control all of them and change the settings of them directly from this remote. So that's super handy, super good. My kit is very simple. I don't carry too much in the bag, especially as it's a backpack. 
because that is going to be super heavy. I could potentially get a bag with wheels or something like that, which I would recommend to anyone if you sort of travel around a bit more, if you're going, if you travel on planes a lot or trains, buses, London Underground, whatever. I would definitely recommend maybe getting a bag with wheels because this can be quite heavy when it's got everything in it, especially this lens. This lens is so heavy, so I would definitely recommend getting a bag with wheels if you're gonna be walking around a lot. But fortunately, I drive and I drive to set and I work in studios a lot, so I don't actually need a bigger bag or a bag that has wheels and everything. So that's everything that's in the camera bag. So now I'm gonna show you some of the other bits and pieces that I use on set and in studio, so let's go. So let's talk about lighting. So I work in studio a lot and I use flash. Um, so the lights that I tend to use most often are pro photo lights. These are just really good quality, easy to use. Um, they are quite expensive, but I find that the quality is just incredible. So this is a B1. This is actually a battery powered flash. So you can take this on location. There's no wires or anything. And that's the reason why I bought these. So this is actually the detachable battery here. So this comes off and you just charge this bit. And they're just really good, as you can see. I don't want to blind you, but there we go. So I have two of these. And then occasionally I use some Profoto D2s as well, which are not battery powered. You have to plug those in. Um, but these are just really good. I love Profoto products. I have a few of their modifiers. Um, they're just super easy to use. Um, it's all digital on the back here, so you can adjust the intensity of the light, turning it up and down. And as I mentioned before, you can use it with the air remote, so you don't actually have to walk over to the light and touch it. You can do all of that wirelessly, which is super handy. So Profoto B1s, and then also in here, I have like gels and different bits and pieces that I sort of use on set as well as some spare batteries. Again, I always keep loads and loads of batteries because the worst thing is when your batteries are running out. So you have eight, triple A and double A as well. Hate when my batteries run out on set. So, so batteries, super important. So that's the lighting I use. If you want me to, I'm gonna do more videos and I'll probably go into more detail about lighting, different setups, different modifiers and stuff. So if you wanna see that, let me know. Clips are super, super important. This is like, I think it's called an A-clamp, and I use these all the time. They're great for clipping wires, clipping fabric. Often the stylist that I work with will often grab for one of these to sort of fix clothes and stuff from behind. They're just super handy, keeps everything tight in place, brilliant. And I also have these, which are like smaller ones. They're not as strong. They're just great for just clipping things. The thing with being on set or like shooting stuff is you need something for every situation. You never know when you're gonna need a clip, a safety pin, or whatever. So I always just carry everything. If I use it, great. If I don't, at least I had it. One thing I always carry on set is gaffer tape in black and white. You never know when you're gonna need to stick a wire down or hold something in place. And the tape is just super, super handy. It rips really easily. You don't need the scissors to use it. So I'd always recommend carrying black and white tape. So, that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any more questions about anything, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you wanna check out any of the equipment, I've linked it all in the description. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, it's at Ian Hippo, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out next time when I upload. That's it guys, see ya, peace.